Hello everyone, this is Joseph J. McAllister and today we're going to talk a little bit about how I made this screened porch. Okay, so first of all, this is the basic look of the screened porch and you can see over on this side I've got a door and I've also got a door on the exact opposite side over there as well. And basically the look of it is really nice. And there's the other door. And uh, we've had it up for a good five years and we use it all the time. It's really great. Uh, we really love it. So originally for a long, long, long time, we just had this cement area that we always thought we'd turn into an awning or something like that. And sure enough, it was completely useless having a big slab of cement outside your door in Riverside, California where it gets uh, 120 degrees out during the summer and during the winter it's actually kind of cold and sometimes it rains. So eventually we had this uh, awning put in and it was just an aluminum awning and it cost uh, about $6,500 for a company to put it in and we thought oh you know great now we're gonna have this great outdoor living space and the truth is, is that it was completely useless, you know, uh, all it did is provide some shade and honestly that's really not enough, you know, you still had the cold air coming in, uh, you had the rain pouring in all over the porch, um, you had uh, the sun, you know, the heat from the sun and the hot outside, uh, out here, the hot wind blowing through there, and um, also tons of mosquitoes and flies and, and birds coming in and pooping all over the porch and the chairs and it was still useless and we never came out here for anything. Well the basics is that uh, eventually we created this screen porch and we use it all the time now and as you can see our cats use it all the time. They're very happy with it. and um. Yeah, it's become this really great thing now, but you know, until it was completed, it was completely useless. So now I'm gonna tell you real quick, try to give you a basic description of how I made it. Okay, so first of all, I had all these uh, two by threes, which are not two by fours, they're a little smaller, called two by threes that you get from Lowe's. Um, and they're white wood, they're very light and easy to drill into and they the the great thing is they only cost about two dollars and ten cents per board and they're two by threes that are eight foot long now I had these two by threes because they're part of uh, you know every year I build a haunted house in my backyard that's like 40 rooms and um, so that's what I was using them for so they're actually really weathered and they've been out here a long time, but you know, the wood just gets harder and harder each year. And it's really not a big deal as long as they don't warp. And if you lay them out straight, which this isn't too good right now, but uh, they'll maintain their shape and be good to use. Now, the other cool thing about this real quick is, remember how I said this whole thing, the awning cost $6,500 for somebody to do. It cost me 200 bucks and a week of my time to do all the screen porch stuff and paint it and everything, be completely done with it, put in the doors, etc., and just be completely done. A week and 200 bucks, and that is a great deal. And it's basically because I did it myself, so. But you know, like I said, like five years later, it looks wonderful. There's no problems with it, it's, it's great. Here's the leftover uh, wire fencing that I bought from Lowe's. It's pretty cheap. Uh, I think it was like uh, maybe 25 bucks or something for a roll. And um, that's really important uh, for at least the design that I did. So that's part of what we use. Just real quick, this is all screwed together um, with wood screws. It's not nailed together because um, if I want to take it apart and replace one of the screens like say the cats put a hole in the screen for some reason then 
I'm gonna have to replace that screen but it's been up for five years and we've got five cats and we don't have any holes in the screen so I was surprised about that but you know I screwed it together so that uh, in case that I one day had to replace the screens and also um, I used interior uh, flat flat white paint um, and I know you're supposed to use exterior paint or whatever but the thing is I had painted several boards as you can see this little board right here with this flat white paint um, for Halloween stuff that was interior and I had painted it like eight years ago and it still looks great I mean it didn't didn't all flake off or something weird happened to it it just there it is right so I thought when I did this um, I thought you know what I just use the same stuff and it it's worked out great there it is it's nothing wrong with it so that's why I did if you want to use exterior then go ahead but I'm just saying personally I used um, interior flat white paint and it's been just fine now as you can see on the lower level I put in this wire fencing which actually just made it kind of a really nice design and add a little security to it like people couldn't just come in through here very easily I guess they could on the top part but um, but you know on the top part I felt it kind of ruined the view and on the lower part I thought it looked really nice but it was kind of to make sure that the cats didn't claw their way through here and then run off and get hit by a car or something okay so first of all you're gonna start with these lower sections and as you can see I have uh, let's see five of them and basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna make uh, five squares that fit in here well first um, there's a little groove in here right behind this cat get off of here what are you doing okay so there's a little groove right there <laughs> I think I've got have to put him inside um, and basically that little groove right there okay so the, the cat gets really upset if I'm in the yard and then he's not allowed to go out in the yard so he's tripping out <laughs> so I had to put him inside okay so basically um, these uh, aluminum uh, porch awnings come with this little groove in here that is the size of of this uh, of a two by three and basically you put the two by three in there you're gonna bolt it in well screw it in uh, to the frame and then later when you make this see this this is a three inch um, screw right here and it's actually going all the way back and into the wood right there and that's what's holding it from moving is that there's a board right there and it's the perfect size so it just worked out fine so you're gonna put those in there um, on either side of your beam post so you could sort of see it back in there and again you could see the three inch screw that's going back into that board and then there's screws going into the aluminum so those are gonna be what holds these screens into place and if you want to remove them and replace them at some point then uh, that's what you're gonna do I'll be able to pull them apart as I was saying there's these uh, these lower squares and basically you make a, a square shape that's gonna fit in there and then um, these are all doubled all this stuff is doubled see this is not just one thick it's too thick so there's one square on the outside, one square on the inside, and the screen is sandwiched in the middle. So what you're gonna do first, you're gonna make these lower squares that are doubled, and then you're going to put the screen in and you're gonna wood staple the screen in and you're gonna pull and staple, pull and staple, get it all super tight. Um, and then you're gonna put in and cut this fencing with uh, some wire cutters and you're gonna put that in and you're gonna, gonna staple that in with wood staples as well and if any are, are sticking up you're gonna hammer them down 
and then you're going to screw those two pieces together and shove it into the space and then like i was saying you're going to put in screws that will hold it into place on either side so this has like three and there's three over there so once you've gone all the way around you have that part done the second part is i took um, just more for style to just make it look really nice kind of like a railing um, I took a flat half inch piece of wood and I just laid it across here as you can see I just kind of screwed it into place right there before measuring and doing my my upper ones now these are the ones that are more scenic as I was saying so you're not going to put that fencing material in there uh, you're going to leave it open for a really nice view so basically here again you're just gonna make your outside and your inside uh, board and before you put in the screens on these boards you've got to paint the outside and inside part and let it completely dry because if uh, water gets in here then it's gonna warp and you don't want that to happen like the inside it'll get in there and it'll start bowing out or something like that so before you put these two squares together, be sure to paint them completely. And with all this stuff, paint it completely. Don't just paint the outside when you're done. That's not gonna work too well. We measure that. Um, if you look right up there, you can see that there's an extra set of two boards up there. And the reason why I did that is because on this other side here, so it just had to do with the shape of our awning. Um, on the other side, um, I didn't want this side to be super high and then this side to be at a different level. So they're both at the same level. And so on this side, I had to put in two extra boards and just screw those in with three inch uh, wood screws. And then on this side, um, it evened up because I had to put extra, two extra boards and then these spacers in to fill in this area. But we'll get to that in a second. So on mine, I put in these two extra boards and then I measured this space. And um, I think it actually looks better like that because it kind of brought it down and made it a little more cozy rather than having these huge windows. Also, I think it also had to do with um, the screen was only so long and so it had it had to be done that way anyways So basically outside inner square and then the screen and you would staple it in and then you screw these together now part of like how I was saying warping um, is basically the reason for another reason for these two screens uh, the two squares instead of just it being one thick is this that um if it's just one thick it's probably going to warp and distort over time as it gets wet and it dries and it's, the boards are going to warp um but with too thick it's much stronger and it's stronger because um i actually took screws and i screwed along here about every foot i put in a screw i think these ones are on the back side to hold these two pieces together so if this wants to warp out it can't because it screwed every foot to this other one also that binds the two together in the first place but I did lots of them because I don't want these to warp out or, or the other side to warp out either or maybe it like would bend up like this you know but five years right it's staying in place because of that so now you've got your upper and your lower is all done and so now real quick there's a little issue here um i could have the actual groove um well actually i was thinking i could actually just go from here and go straight to the wall but the thing is um our porch cement was a little bigger by a foot on either side and i really want to maximize this area i don't want to shrink it and then have to have it smaller the rest of my life, you know? So I thought as long as we're gonna make it, we might as well make it as big as we can. Uh, so I put in these little pieces right here, which are extenders. 
um, so you can see all the way up to the bottom and the top and of course real quick on the other side you know an extender and those are just to maximize the amount of space and also it lines up with the roofing so that works out even better as well so now as you can see even though we've got our screens in we still have these door area uh, door areas on the other side and we've also got the top area that we still have to deal with the first thing that I did was I dealt with uh, this door area and basically I had to put kind of little extensions and make the door area uh, just the right size for the door that we bought and measure it and make sure that there's just like a little teeny bit of room and that this is going to open and close and it's not completely snug there's room for uh, the rainwater to warp the door a little bit and it's still to work and off the ground just a little bit as well one problem with these wood doors is they don't come painted um, you basically you have to paint this whole thing also all those little joints right there like this and this and down here and there all of it is not actually glued together and you put start putting the screen in and you think you're getting it done or something and all of a sudden uh, it starts warping a little bit and you pull on it and the whole thing falls apart and the thing you have to do is you have to grab this door lay it on the ground very first thing and you have to one by one glue all these joints together with wood glue which is like or like Elmer's glue uh, pretty much the same thing so once you've done that and make sure that it's super square because you don't want to glue it together and have it kind of warped so use your little uh, squaring tool to make sure that this is all super square before it dries and then once uh, and then put some weights on it to make sure that it doesn't warp in any direction too and then you're gonna have to paint this whole thing and then you're gonna have to put the screens in yourself now one thing I would have done differently is I bought this cheap flimsy super super flimsy doors that were cheap from uh, Lowe's and you know what I wouldn't have I would replace those sometime with uh, aluminum doors <clears throat> aluminum screen doors or at the very least get the heaviest ones that you could uh, get you know because th this is pretty strong uh, the frames gonna hold the door and these screen doors aren't very heavy at all but try to go for something on the heavier side or honestly aluminum screen door is really great because that's not gonna warp over time now for this part basically you just have to fill in a shape to get this done and whatever shape that is you're gonna have to create it and put a screen in there so what I did is I took um, clamps and I clamped the boards on the top and on the bottom and then I took and measured on the wood these little side pieces of the wood right there um, I took and measured those and cut those and made sure that they specifically fit in there and then I pulled it out and I made my little piece there and my little piece there and was pretty much done with it one thing I want to tell you though um, along here I actually took screws and I screwed it into the wall right here as best as I could to just kind of stabilize it a little bit and up here again like into the wall but also I took screws and three inch screws and I put them so that they go up into the awning they're actually drilled into the awning so this isn't gonna move and then once you've uh, created this this little shape for your door and make it good and sturdy and also on either side, I put in 
one of these cement bolts. Um, I think they're called a hanger bolt or something like that, where you have to drill into the cement and then you thread it in and, uh, you know, just to really make sure that this door area is good and solid. And honestly, uh, yeah, I only did it like right here and on the other side. So now here's the things about these screens is um, it has this little piece of rubber right here and you kind of roll it in with this little roller tool or you can use a flathead screwdriver. But the thing is, is that these are always trying to come out like every once in a while, you know, every three or four months. I, have, I realize they're all hanging loose. I've got to shove this thing back in again. I was thinking about putting epoxy in there and just making it permanent. Um, at first I was thinking it was a great idea that it could come loose because, um, and you could replace it because I thought the cats were gonna scratch holes in it, but we really haven't had any problems with that. So, you know, I mean, like even when the cat scratched over there a minute ago, there's no holes, so. I know they scratch these things, but there's their little paw prints everywhere. But um, it doesn't seem to ruin them, so that's nice. So I think I would put like some epoxy in there and just have it be permanent and like shove that thing back in on top of the epoxy and let it get permanently stuck in there. Plus these doors are really cheap if you ever wanted to replace it, but I mean it's been like five years and you can see they're, they've been climbing this thing. There's really no holes in there. But what I was going to say about it is this, that um, these have a lock on it that you could flip, but you know, these are really junky. Like if somebody pulled on it very hard at all, it'd just pop open anyways. You know I mean? It's only like uh, an eighth of an inch room before the thing pops open. So, I mean, it's not really going to keep people out of here you know you want to feel this kind of secure so so we put also these little uh like dead bolts into here and i just basically took and drilled a hole in the wall and also since these doors haven't worked out so well um they've been a little flimsy and they want to warp if there's rain and stuff like that um this deadbolt really keeps it in place as, as best as we can unless we decide to just tear these out and replace them with aluminum. So you kind of lift it up and then shove it in there. And then it helps secure the door so that it doesn't warp so much. But like I was saying, this, this door situation hasn't been optimum. So try to get a better door situation for yours. Now our porch light we use um I installed and it's uh let's see it's got a switch inside that turns it on which is really nice as well as uh another switch uh that turns on uh the floodlights out there and we use the 100 100 watt LED bulb and then it actually you know the actual wattage is like I don't know like 15 or something depending on the bulb, but it's really low uh, wattage and, and equivalent to a 100 watt output of light. So, and of course we're, we're using like um, daylight inside and then the more uh, bluish white on the outside. Um, and then these little bulbs I just installed myself and it just is a wire running around and I just have a little plug-in for stuff right there. It's nothing fancy. But um, this part up here, um, I installed this tubing and then I had like a, an electrician come in just uh, kind of make sure that everything was right and fix a few things and make it up to code. Um, but basically, you know, the electricity runs through this tube and then it runs clear out to that corner. And then as you can see, you know, he installed a little box and then he, a plastic box, and he installed the light on top of that box. And, you know, all the little stuff to make it waterproof. 
And you know, we turn these on even when it's raining like crazy. It doesn't matter. It's totally waterproof and it's nice. And um, these are, you know, again, 100 watt equivalent um, LED bulbs. They're running maybe like 15 or 20 watts or something like that. And as you can see, it really lights up the backyard. And I got a little music stage background back there, so right now. But yeah, it lights up the yard really well. Now, real quick view of our porch. You know, we've got a porch light right there. We've got a water fountain. Um, we've got, you know, our window and screen door right there. Um, and tables and chairs. And we've got this nice space heater and a barbecue and chimes and little synthetic plants and these lights up here. And we got a radio right here for talk radio listening and uh, some candles and things. So, you know, and um, the biggest user of this porch, honestly, is the cats. So uh, this helps them be able to separate from each other and get some, uh, some space. And then uh, be able to come outside. This guy wants to come out. There's the example, right? <laughs> Anyways, uh, they love coming out here all day long and they just can't wait for me to let them out, apparently. And um, this way they don't run off and get hit by a car and get killed and they still get to come out and enjoy nature. And so 90% was really for them, but you know, we come out here and enjoy ourselves all the time. Now, one thing I wanted to stress real quick is that uh, the screens that I put in, I haven't had any problems with that whatsoever. But the screens that I put into these doors um, haven't been that great because of their stupid um, rubber seal system that's supposed to hold those in there and it doesn't hold them in all that well at all. Uh, so also there's a video that um, I put on here that one is going to be all about why you need a screen porch for cats and it goes on and on about that. Um, and then another video I just made was for um, why you'd want a screen porch as opposed to an awning and like all the benefits you get from it uh, that I didn't talk about in this video and uh, things that I was surprised about that I didn't know would be so great about how the screens work and why they create such a great environment for you to go out in. And yeah, we use this all the time now. So it was really important to put these screens in. So anyways, I'm Joseph J. McAllister. Like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.